Hello everyone and welcome back to Blender for Games and as you can hear I'm super tired but I decided to make a video because I didn't upload for so long and I really really want to go back to YouTube scene. Second of all, thank you for the support. You guys are really amazing. Almost 20,000 views on one video. I can't thank you enough and that's why I'm I pretty much decided to go back to YouTube scene even if it kills me so pretty much it's going to kill me but yellow uh, the most requested video was material setup for video games. That's why I made a small presentation just presentation just to like introduce you how the engine reads materials. So let's get started. Types of PBR workflows and your first question might be what is PBR? Well, I don't, I don't want to go super technical about it. I'm just gonna say this. So it's pretty much engine trying to mimic real life materials, trying to make them appear real. And as you can see, I put three workflows, but actually there are only two, Metal Rough and Spec Loss. For the mix, I put there for a reason. Metal Rough is used in Unreal Engine, Spec Loss is used by CryEngine, and Mix is used by Unity's HDR PI workflow. Why did they made it like that? I don't know. I don't actually care, but it's super easy to know the differences. Uh, let me explain the textures in each, uh, each one. As you can see, I'll go by step by step because some of them are pretty simple, uh, pretty, uh, pretty same. So albedo is pretty much color information uh, without any shadows. That's pretty self-explanatory. I don't need to explain anything about that. Normal is like fake bumpiness. I'll show you uh, an example of a text uh, material only using normal maps so you know what I'm talking about. Metal, uh, as you can see, it's used in metal rough and in the mix. And that's pretty much saying if the material is metal, metal or not. So if your material is fully metal, you're going to have a full white image, so one. And if your material is not a metal, it's going to be fully black. And please don't try to get any values between because that breaks the PBR workflow. Now we have roughness, glossiness, and glossiness. So the roughness is how rough the, the material is. Glossiness is how glossy material is. The only difference between them, they're actually inverted. So if you invert the roughness, you get the glossiness. Pretty much the same material, just with inverted values. Ambient occlusion, it's pretty much some shadow information in small cracks or something that is hard to get to. Uh, ambient occlusion is not used a lot because it breaks the PBR workflow a little bit, but it's still there. For the bonuses, I put them there because you can use them, but not necessarily. And all of those of these engines actually use them. So height, emissive, mask, transparency, etc., etc., etc. Actually, no, don't think about these, etc. So height, emissive, uh, mask, transparency are used in these engines if they're needed. I don't know if you need glass, you're gonna use transparency. If you need some light in your material, you're gonna use the emissive. And you you get the idea what I'm t telling you here. So sRGB and linear, and you're like, what, what are you talking about? So I'll make this even more simple. So sRGB are the textures, textures, not materials, textures, so albedo or something like that, that uses colors, so RGB values. And for example, it's, uh, we have albedo, specular, diffuse, emissive, and normal map. I don't know why I didn't write it down. And linear, uh, linear are the black and whites. So textures that don't have any colors and they have everything between black or white. So that's pretty much metallic, ambient occlusion, roughness or height. This is really important because some engines will make, uh, will give you, um, will show you a mistake in your texture. For example, if you put uh, albedo map as a linear value in Unreal Engine, it's going to be bleached out because it's trying to get that white or black. And if you put a roughness for sRGB, it's going to look glossy, wet, really bad, and it's going to break your PBR workflow. This is the last one. I hopefully didn't choke you to, to death of, I don't know, boredom. <laughs> but the difference between OpenGL and DirectX normal map, there's only one difference between these things. They look the green or how do you even call it? Uh, why? Yeah, I even wrote it down and I'm asking myself. So why is green channel? You know, in RGB, G is green. The OpenGL is looking as it plus. So upper, upper, everything at up. Oh my God, that's really bad sentence. Everything above is green 
an op uh, direct tax is doing uh, it's looking at it as a negative or it's looking it down why did they made this it's how pretty much the engine was made before it was made they took the one of these workflows uh, as you can see, DirectX, it's used by Unreal Engine 4 and CryEngine. And OpenGL is used by Unity and Blender. Marmoset Substance Painter used both. It's pretty much, it's, even in Unreal Engine, you can like just check one box and it's going to fix. Why am I telling you this? Because sometimes you can export your textures. They're going to look really weird in the fake bumpiness and you don't know what's happening. It's pretty much this. I'm going to show you even... When we go deeper in tutorials, I'm going to show you how the mistakes are made and how they're fixed. So when we got this done, and hopefully you're still in this video, if you are, please like the video and say I'm awesome, I, I survived the Blender for Games boring tutorial. Hopefully it's not boring, I'm really trying my best even if I'm tired, but... Now let's start with exporting from Blender, and I'm going to come back when I go to the Blender. So we're in the engine now, and as you can see, I made a small scene, small scene, that sounds really weird, but I made a small scene that, in a material that I made in Substance Designer, and now let's, for example, say I'm going to Unreal Engine, you just pick the textures that I already mentioned in that presentation, like for this example, I'm using, I don't know, uh, albedo, roughness, normal, and I'm not going to use metallic, let me actually make one, I don't even color it's not important because it's gonna be black I'm just gonna make a black image out of it because it doesn't have any metal values but as you can see I plugged everything in into my base stuff and I'm looking in this render and I'm like oh this is pretty well solid not nice and I want to bake th this this information and export it or actually just export it and how do I do that I actually make a small hack about it I go here I mean First steps are pretty not hackish, but you know, this later on it's gonna become hackish. So by hack, I mean I forcefully exported uh, uh, from Blender to, I just forcefully exported. So first of all, you have to go to cycles. You can't bake textures without cycles. And second of all, you go here, as you can, I'm just gonna close this. You go here, there's bake, you press this, you choose diffuse, just color. And let's let me, you have to make another texture. So search image texture, and let's say new. And I'm gonna call it uh, color test. Okay. And I made it 1K, but the original texture is 2K. But for this, for the tutorial, it's pretty uh, pretty enough. So color test. Oh, you can see I already tested this out. You can see it says color sRGB. This is the reason I put that in that presentation. So everything that uses sRGB or colors, you're going to bake it like this. And everything that doesn't, I'm going to show you later, but let me actually bake this. So everything here, you have to like, you have to just take the color. If you, uh, right, if you check direct, indirect, it's going to take the color. Uh, you, it's going to take lighting information, which we don't want. So diffuse, color, take the new texture, you have to make sure it's sRGB and you just pre press bake. And now you're just gonna wait and I'm gonna come back after it bakes. So, okay, guys, it baked and you can see it gave me a perp. Sorry, I actually ate something. And if I don't know if something weird happens, sorry. So, uh, if the <laughs> oh my god, um, so the bake finished and as you can see, we got a perfect result. If something went wrong, it's pretty much if these settings were not right. So just make sure everything's okay. Now you just export it. Just press image, save as, I don't know, here. New folder, exported stuff. Yes. Perfect. And save as image. Now you want to export the roughness. You're just going to say here, roughness. Big type roughness. You're gonna make the new texture as well. So search image texture, right? New rough roughness. Perfect spelling, like every time. Just gonna take it here. Roughness. You're gonna put linear. 
don't forget this this is actually really important don't don't generate srgb i mean you can you can like change in photoshop later but please make cleaner so you don't make more work for yourself and just gonna hit bake and this one actually was really really fast so let's just say save as roughness png okay i'll i'll call it like that save as and the last step is the hack thing so everything with srgb so pretty much um i don't know normal map um what what's with srgb yeah let me let me go to this presentation again sorry guys so uh, actually pretty pre best thing i could do is actually go to presentation so albedo spec diffuse and emissive are all gonna go to the same thing and what's actually hackish about it you go here oh my god you go here on your albedo you're just gonna change it to i don't know normal map I can't actually see it. Let me let me, let me just go a little bit <laughs> closer like this. So normal, for example, and you're just gonna go like back to the I don't know. Uh, it was the fuse, am I right? Yep. And just gonna bake it again. And I'll be back as soon as it bakes. And as you can see, our little hack actually worked. Don't call police on me. This is pretty illegal stuff, guys. And if you do it, I don't know. You're probably gonna lose your blender blender li license, which is really expensive. So and when you finish it, and I actually forgot to mention, every time you make, um, when you need it to export a new texture, you have to do like, let me just search it, uh, image texture. So every time you want to export, just make a new one, so you have to bake over it. Uh, the hack actually works with the liners as well. So if you want a metal one, you're gonna go to the roughness. You're gonna make, you're gonna pick your, I don't know. They're actually black ones. Well, yeah, they're actually something like this. And if you take the albedo, and pretty much I can just export this as my metal, metal values for this material. That's actually pretty much it from exporting the textures from Blender to the given engine. And in the next episode, I'm actually going to show you how to pack your textures for a given engine. So I'm going to go fully how to pack your textures for Blender, for Unreal Engine, how to pack your texture for Unity, and how to pack your textures for CryEngine. So stick, stick with me, and if I get lost again, you can come and beat me. I'm okay with it, and thank you for the support again, and I'll see you soon, I guess.